Hi folks and welcome to Masterclass. In this session, I wanna talk about wheel bearing maintenance intervals. There's a lot of arguments, particularly on social media, about the maintenance intervals that are specified in the owner manuals. Now, they may seem a bit extreme in that we ask people to check and regrease their bearings at 5,000 kilometers and replace them at 10,000 kilometers. Normally, people will say, my car bearings lasted me 200,000 kilometers, yours should last 200,000 kilometers. Ideally, they will. We use a very high quality Timken wheel bearing. They are very, very good, they're great quality. But some of the conditions in which we take our camper trailers aren't conducive to long bearing life. Let me give you this scenario. You're heading along the telly track, hopping from creek to creek to creek. During your travel between each water crossing, your bearings and your hubs may be getting up to 70, 80, maybe 90 degrees in temperature. If there's not a long queue at that water crossing and you dive straight in, the water's deeper than the hubs, you cross through the water, what actually happens is the entire hub assembly cools very, very quickly. And the only thing protecting the grease and the bearings from water ingress is one, a friction fit grease cap, and two, a rubber seal that is actually designed more to keep grease in and stop it from escaping than it is to stop water from getting sucked by the seal between the axle and into your bearings. So you need to consider that. Also, while you're thinking about that, if your four wheel drive doesn't have extended diff breathers, think about how much water you may actually have in your diffs from not letting them cool down before you've gone across water crossings that are deeper than the breathers on top of the diff housing. Something to think about. Your camper trailer is exactly the same. Another scenario, there's a track uh, just west of me up in the Blue Mountains and it's very, very popular on weekends. And I quite often see people towing camper trailers down there. It's a little bit steep for caravans. And it is first gear, low range, all the way down. And if you're towing, you are actually riding the trailer brakes all the way to the bottom. It's very steep. And when you get to the bottom, I'll guarantee that your brake hub temperatures are well in excess of 100 degrees. I've towed down that track myself. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you turn, you go 40 metres and there is a creek crossing that is nearly always deeper than the hubs. So you've got a lot of temperature. You hit the water without letting things cool down. They suck water into your bearings. You continue on and to continue the full length of that track is about another 100 kilometres. You pop out on the highway, head home, and park your trailer up for the next month or whatever till you've got some more annual leave or another long weekend. Your trailer is sitting there with moisture in the grease and amongst the bearings. And simple as that, there is no corrosion protection on a set of bearings other than the grease. The trailer sits there, you do that sort of trip a couple of times, Next thing you know, you've only done a few thousand kilometres, but you've tortured your bearings in the worst possible way and they fail. You take trailer out, there's enough rust on them that they fail, they seize, they spin and weld themselves to the stub axle and people are screaming, oh my God, this trailer is poor quality, when in actual fact, it's been the way you used it. So that's why we set the intervals at what we do. Hardcore off-road four-wheel drive, lots of water crossings. Check them every two and a half thousand Ks. Absolutely check them every 5,000 Ks. And under those sort of circumstances, you should be replacing them at 10,000 kilometers. Sure, there are gonna be examples where people don't need to, but who wants to be that guy on the Monday evening of a public holiday pulled up on the side of the freeway with a seized up bearing, waiting for a tilt tray for the next three to four hours while the kids are screaming in the back of the four wheel drive, bored, you've run out of soft drink and they're just going nuts. Don't put yourself in that position. Follow the guidelines in the owner manual and you'll reduce the risk of failure to as close to zero as possible. Anyway, folks, that's enough from me. Thanks for watching. For more masterclass tips and great videos, go to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook so you can see each new episode as it comes available.